world of YouTube and welcome to the listening log update for January of 2024. I've got eight new records that have released this year so far that I've spun that I'll be talking about in this video with time codes listed in the description to each review if you want to skip around this video to hear my thoughts on any particular record. There have been some heavy hitters that are already dropping some stuff and some stuff that I was already immediately hyped for given some of the names at hand with some stuff that already came out that I had to put on the backlog so that I can give these releases their time in the sun. With that in mind, give it a like if you're excited and let's go ahead and start combing through what I spun. Rarely do I start a year knowing what album I'm going to spin first, but Kid Cudi's Insano is easily going to be one of the first things, if not the first thing I spun this year, because it was an album that I saw getting hype early on from an artist that I have a lot of interest in. Even if Intergalactic, the soundtrack sort of sounded like a sending off and sort of a, a tempered approach to the spacey, melancholic, melodic, melody-driven stuff that he's championed on classics like Man on the Moon, I assume that would have been like a pivot point for his catalog at the very least and this would have been like the start of a new era for Kid Cudi where he goes insano. He even snagged DJ Drama to add to the hype. However, his inclusion more feels like a sort of point of comparison between this and another popular record that he was all over and added to not only like a thematic touch that the record had going on but acted as like a nice juxtaposition to some of the emotional heights and personal points that that record delved into whereas on Insano he feels like a hype man for an artist that is pitching a lot of in intensity but isn't quite matching that energy in a way that it feels like DJ Drama is almost carrying this project more than Kid Cudi. Hell amidst this album's initial release Kid Cudi got into a beef online with Lupe Fiasco of all motherfuckers. And Lupe Fiasco had more intensity throughout that beef than Cudi. Cudi was purely on, like, maintenance mode. He was trying to just fix the problem without necessarily matching his energy, which I respect him for doing, but, like, with an album like this, when your beef and your collaborators are adding more to the thematics and energy than you are that's kind of a problem that's not to say cuddy falters on insano but outside of the moments where he's more just kind of coasting throughout his own lane like on the opener often i have these dreams or on electro wave baby with its odd ace of bass sample or on funky wizard smoke where he's clearly just diving into the whole stoner vibe that he very much came up with He's not adding anything to the energy to evoke an album title like this. Like on a beat like Mr. Coola, with the sort of tone that that track presents and how fuzzy that low end gets, I would assume Cuddy to sort of come with more intensity to match the horns on that beat. Or when DJ Drama hypes up Rager Town on Cud Life and he's pleading for Cuddy to bring some energy and he just comes in with this mellow hum. It sort of undercuts a lot of what's going on here. There's some tracks on here that I think are pretty nice outside of the more mellow driven stuff. Like, I think Keep Bouncing is fine. I love the collaboration with Aesop Rocky Wow, honestly. I think that Rocky adds a lot to the track in a way that I think is complimentary. And A Tale of the Night is the closest I feel like Cuddy gets to really matching that intensity uh, in a way that I think, again, sort of nets positive. I also think Freshy is another standout on here that I think Cuddy, again, doesn't necessarily go insane on, but I think at least presents an idea that I think is well explored throughout the track with an instrumental that I think complements that energy in a way that I don't think happens enough on this project. But a lot of this record just isn't reaching the calibers and I feel like is more saved by Cuddy's idiosyncrasies slash some of the hands in the pot and instrumentals that do more to carry the title than Cuddy does. I'm giving this a four. I thought about giving it a five just because I wanted to give it the benefit of the doubt. But in reality, I'm really not going to revisit a whole lot of this by the year's end. Uh, it's unfortunate because I do like Cuddy a lot. And I think that especially following Man on the Moon 3 and even the solid intergalactic 
soundtrack. This is not what I would say is a, a glorious start to a new era for Cuddy. Show him you the boss. We could take a jet to see the world. I know you a smile city girl. Turn on. Speaking of rappers sort of missing the mark on their own concepts, 21 Savage on his newest album, American Dream, while a little more maybe tonally consistent because 21 knows his lane and knows how to stay in it, I feel like lyrically, outside of dipping into his own sort of idiosyncratic circles with some uh, wide variety of results, the idea of exploring 21's struggles, especially that he'd faced when he was like being detained by ICE and stuff, as like a portrayal of the American dream, I feel like is lost by this album's close. It starts off really strong, and I feel like the intensity on tracks like Red Rum and NHIE and Let It To My Brudda peer back into that lens in all of its darkness on the come up and the sort of like dream spinning on Should Have Wore A Bonnet sort of feels like a looking back on one's own dreams and aspirations in a way that could be tied into this. A lot of this project, for as solid as it is, I feel like could have been more if 21 would have sort of focused more on the, the mission statement of the project. While I enjoy the beats of the Metro, uh, while I enjoy the beats on the Metro Boom collaborators, and I think they, again, sonically sort of add to the tapestry of the record, I don't think 21 always delivers on those in a way that I think is as tight as it could be. Same with Sneaky. I think Sneaky's a track that just feels like it detracts from the overall ideas of the record. I like that eventually the record does sort of come back around on the idea, but it's not until like literally the very end that it feels like it's the biggest focal point of the project. I think a lot of this record is solid. I think a lot of it's fine. I think that if you're a fan of 21, you'll find stuff in here to enjoy. I think that personally, I just think I've seen 21 be more consistent across a project slash back himself with uh, a lot more to sort of carry a project through to its end. There's parts around here where I feel like 21 spinning in circles in a way that I don't think really adds too much or expands too much within his already limited scope that I think is all the, as worthwhile as the stuff I've heard him in, in the past. I'm giving this a six. It's fine. It's solid enough. Uh, it at least has a mood or at least an idea that it keeps coming back to. I just wish it came back to it a little more often on the record. We all die young someday. I'll be honest with you guys, as somebody who is a lifelong fan of Green Day, I haven't been excited for this new Green Day record. And it's not just because it's following what is easily their worst record in their catalog with uh, Father of All Motherfuckers. I'm just hearing so many other newer punk bands and even older punk bands doing old punker stuff better then I think Green Day could come to play with, which the final product of Saviors has moments that I think both prove my point and also prove that a band that I've been up for so long still's got it. There's parts of this that feel like they're trying to find a new baseline of sorts, which I would argue they've tried to do a couple times in their career. I feel like anytime they tab Rob Cavallo, they're just like, come on, man, we know you know how to make us work. We just want to do something that at least sounds better than our last thing. And there's parts of this that feel like it's trying to do that, but it doesn't lose sight of what I would argue were some of the low points of Father of All Motherfuckers that come back on this. It's just far lesser in lieu of better songs that have better songwriting and again the production on this as a whole just sets this like leagues above that shit stain of a record i'll start by talking about the positives i do like that they still haven't lost sight of some of that bite in some choice ways whether it's the snarkiness on look mono brains or a bleakness that sort of gets fleshed out in a way that isn't as cringy on tracks like coma city or sort of skirts that line on living in the 20s I think that the closest they get to sort of hitting that adolescent sort of love that they do so, so well in the past on Bobby Sox is a solid attempt at that type of song. I also like the softer moments like Goodnight Adeline and Father to a Son. The title track is also pretty okay. And 1981 is 
a sort of like Green Day ass Green Day song that has a little bit of fire beneath it and given the production is quality as hell it all just kind of sounds like vintage Green Day in the best way possible. That being said, writing on tracks like The American Dream is Killing Me, that that is speaking to the same sort of ideologies that Explored on tracks that I do like more than it has some moments that I feel like the writing gets a little clumsy. I don't really enjoy their like more classic rock inspired stuff like on Corvette Summer or on One-Eyed Bastard. I really don't like One-Eyed Bastard. I think it's easily one of the weaker songs on this and rivals some of the shit from like Father of All in like a very similar way. I think that the derivative riff is lazy. I think the chorus is lazy. And it's a track that I think just doesn't necessarily exemplify this record's strengths. While Strange Days Are Here to Stay sort of tries to sort of add a little more tongue-in-cheek sort of jabbing at the absurdity of the times and, and I think does so amicably in some regards it also kind of falters in a way to the American Dream is Killing Me. Neither are like bad songs but as far as like tracks on the record that are also speaking on things these do so in a way that I think is not quite as good. I'm kind of torn with her to put a ranking on this record because I do really enjoy its highs but its lows I feel like do bog it down to some degree, but I still want to give this a six because the production is still so fucking choice. One thing I'm glad to see kind of get its own time in the sun, honestly, is Mike Dirt because the bass play on here is fucking strong and gives this that Green Day flavor that I do really love to hear from these guys. And I feel like as far as sounding like a unit, even if there's some tracks that I think are detractory they haven't sound this tight in a solid like eight years in my opinion when if they could tell i'm a dope boy on second thought don't tell i'm a dope boy uh. <clears throat> i'll be honest i didn't really know who bruiser wolf was i know it was part of the bruiser brigade who was like affiliates with danny brown back in the day but i didn't really spawn a whole lot of their stuff i was just mostly familiar with danny and when bruiser wolf came up on quaranta i really loved his feature on there. I thought he matched Danny's sort of off-kilter style, but in his own sort of way that I was hoping would be the like his MO on a full-length record, which, at least on this, is absolutely the case. And I really fucking love the style of this. He's got this delivery that mostly reminds me of, like, E-40, which I think comes through in a lot of his storytelling style bars, especially the stuff that crops up on here. He's got this punchline style that feels very old school inspired. I mean, he drops Naughty by Nature on one of the bars on here at Hall Out Your Man's, but I think is like the like best example I can give of like that idea of him, of what his flow kind of reminds me of. Uh, a lot of this record and on tracks like that and on Crack Cocaine, he gets real intimate on his uh, sort of history of dealing and and his perspective on a lot of that and the sort of hazy instrumental that feels like a complete juxtaposition from like the club stuff on E40 gives that style of delivery and that punchline focused almost a darker edge that I think Bruiser Wolf sort of skirts the line of cartoonish and seriousness pretty gracefully because I mean following that up he's got a track like Looney Tunes that doesn't necessarily get super cartoonish, but grounds that sort of imagery in a nice reality with the instrumental. His part of Crack Cocaine feels like if you took a rapper from the 80s and stuck him on a modern style beat and it creates a really good marriage. While the moments where he sort of dips into that, dips away from that and more leads into the club style beats, like on Too Bad with Danny Brown and Z-Lopers, and on I Was Taught To with Trinidad James, feel like a good sort of deviation from that they help sort of round out this record and cement you in bruiser wolf's world more full stop this whole record it feels like bruiser wolf's just wanted to talk his shit and he does so from start to finish with good punch lines an interesting captivating delivery style and production that helps accent both that and his theme fucking well as hell this is a great strong earlier in the year release that i'm curious to see how it will stick with me as the year goes on when i talked about personality driven rap a lot within the last uh, end of last year and as far as like having a personality that feels like 
they are doing their best to stand above people in their lane while also being unique on top of that. Bruiser Wolf, I think, exemplifies that in a positive light. I'm giving this an 8 out of 10. It's really fucking great. I think that it's got some cool ideas in the pot. I would love to have seen other collaborators work with him that are a little more offbeat like him. Like, I think that Chris Crack and Fat Ray on their respective tracks, especially G's and Hustles, Fat Ray acts as a good sort of straight man to Bruiser Wolf style. I would have liked to have seen more sort of dip into the the oddity side of things. But outside of that, I think this is really fucking cool. And I think this is a strong ass album. I saw you at the pharmacy. I want to survive as your faded memory. Heaven is just wiggly air. And I'm a For those wondering why my January ass January was missing a 2024 hype and a state of the channel video. Blame Cheekface. I was going to do a video that combined both those topics into one more focused product. But when Cheekface dropped this new album, It's Sorted, as a surprise, I threw it out the window. They were going to be on there. I was very excited for a new Cheek Cheekface album. And with It's Sorted, I feel like they further pushed their sound in ways that I really enjoy because in some choice instances, not only do they retain their identity and sort of continue their own version of like postmodern observations of the modern world with the sort of flat delivery by their vocalist, I love that they introduce other things like an up in production that lets their harmony work sing all the more brighter and some brass accompaniment on some choice instances that i feel like makes them more in line with like another point of comparison i'd given them in the past cake i think that it's sorted has a dazzling lovely version of the band still on display while also turning more of those analy analyzations inward like on the opener barn burner the fringe which sees them observing their sort of pseudo skirts with fame and how they're kind of fine with that or the autobiographical or at least diary style writing on parts like grad school one of the tracks that i feel like elevates their sonic production to that sort of pseudo cake realms with its own sort of dance break uh strewn throughout it this is a hell of a record that i absolutely adore Lyrically, they're as sharp as ever, too, between tracks like Popular 2, which have these fun sort of sharp jabs with a sunny disposition at, like, HSAS neighborhoods where everyone's just on their ring cameras all the time and the like, or sort of diving deeper into, I don't want to say, like, the dating scene, but, like, the general social climate, potentially, uh, at least from their POV, like, on trophy hunting at the zoo, or... Um, sort of looking that more inward at the music scene with there were changes in the hardcore scene, which has this just sort of lyrical style that's just talking about the evolutions in a very hilarious way. I also like that they sort of turn some of that inward, like on uh, the opener, The Fringe, which is like a barn burner that talks about sort of skirting the lines of frame, living on the fringe, because success is cringe. Or on just having one's own stern never gonna change style or just sticking in your own lane of sorts with i am continuing to do my own thing while the band does sonically evolve like i mentioned i do think that lyrically they're just kind of playing to their strengths in the best way possible my biggest complaint and i know i don't make it often but especially with the case of this this needed to be longer this is only 26 minutes and some change it is a pocket project through and through and just like other good pocket projects in this lane while i love a lot of the creative energy that is being funneled and championed on this i want a lot more of this cheek face already write kind of short records but this the evolutions on this that increase in production does so much for this band and those ideas do a lot to flesh out this band sound in a way that i just want so much more of this is getting an eight Easily probably the best album I heard all month. Absolutely could have been more higher ranked had there been more to the play table. But with what they gave us, I really like it. And I really want to hear more from these guys. I love this band. I think they're fantastic. And if you haven't heard of Cheek Face, listen to them. They're really fucking good. <laughs> when I dove into Red Moon and Venus last year, I did not expect... Cali Uchis to have a quick turnaround release at the beginning of this year. Yet here we are with Orchidias, a record that has a firm pivot 
into predominantly Spanish uh, lyrics with a huge focus on like Spanish inspired and Mexican inspired music with like a couple of the reggaeton jams and like lush just guitar filled ballads with some bops strewn throughout to create this well-rounded experience that has this passion and love permeating throughout a lot of its lyrics. Even if I'm not a predominant Spanish speaker, uh, I, I got some knowledge of the language. And even in spite of that, Callie does a good job at pulling the listener in to her sort of own emotional place within all of this and keeping the stakes well embedded even without necessarily a full knowledge of the Spanish language. I think that this is a well-crafted, incredibly well-produced series of tracks that definitely feel like she's sort of not necessarily extending from the mindset of Red Moon and Venus, but more giving you this further down the line, a new person. While I've knocked artists like the Black Eyed Peas in the past for like embracing a reggaeton influence and like making it a focal point of their project, it doesn't have the sincerity that a project like this does, you know? When the groove of Diosa comes in and you get cemented in this reggaeton groove, it feels like an evolution or like a deviation across the track listing. Cause it, you know, following a track like Pensamientos Intrusivos, which has this more straightforward synth pop approach that sort of continues the energy from the track before, feels like a more natural progression to the track listing and not just like an aesthetic used to embrace to cash in on the trend. Plus, if I'm going to keep comparing this to another reggaeton record that I just didn't like, the hook writing on the reggaeton songs on here are just infinitely better. The moments that aren't reggaeton are also equally as strong and help extend some of the themes both positive and negative and add you know to that grandiosity that i sort of talked about you know my favorite track de mata is this like lush ass just sad song and like you really feel her pain that she's writing about on there uh and equally as such you can feel the love on a different deviation uh to cut us on as mio which has you know, delvings and talking about the struggles, but love persevering in spite of that. You know, a lot of the bops on here sort of focus on some of that love and help keep that sort of a stronger blossoming thread. Plus, she's very much embracing the change she's going through with pregnancy. And I think that it's just, it's a, it's a well done record as far as like keeping the bops and the emotional gravitas just well strewn throughout. The sequencing is choice. I love this thing a lot. I think it's really fucking good. You know, I feel like if you enjoy this type of music, I feel like this would be a good record to dive into. I'm not like a reggaeton expert. I've talked about that a lot. But I think that this is a really fucking good album that I'm giving an 8 out of 10. I think that it's a strong album to drop early in the year that I'm excited to spin, especially in February. Say it. I almost skipped Little Rope. I almost skipped the new Sleater Kenny record because I think that over their last couple of releases, they've had a sort of sense of diminishing returns. I love No Cities to Love. I thought it was a really good comeback for these girls. But the conflicted feeling that permeated throughout the center won't hold that led to Janet Weiss's departure and an ultimately very boring follow up to that, The Path to Wellness, uh, I just thought, sort of felt like. An iconic band was just done, or at least not delivering to the caliber that I, I really sort of like and expect for them. I will say, Little Rope exceeded some of my low expectations in some regards, and I went into this hoping for more because there's at least a lyrical through line of this. There's themes of exploring grief, and a lot of records I've loved recently really dive into those themes and I think do a lot with them, which I would say still feels like the case on a handful of cuts on here, you know, the opener hell having this sort of bleak feeling of being put right at the moment where grief hits you is well accented. I love the sort of paranoia that creeps up on the lyrics of Hunt You Down. And I think that as far as songwriting goes, it's well done. Same can be said on tracks like Small Finds and Six Mistakes, but my problems with the record don't lie in the songwriting. I think that it's 
not the case at all. And I even think that instrumentally, they're at least creating a more engaging experience with a good dispersal of these like off kilter jams to sort of keep the listener imbued throughout the feelings of maybe grief that could crop up. But there's still something missing with this band, man. While I think that like the drum performances on here are definitely better, and again, those sort of variety of song sort of ideas help showcase that they don't necessarily feel empty in that regard. There's part of the production where a lot of this feels flat. There's some moments where it feels like the vocals are just gone in the mix. It feels like there's a cobbling together of this that I would have expected not to be the case for a band that's been doing this for this long, who's especially had a good knack of keeping noise a component of their sound, but having it be sort of not conflicting with other components of here but the mixing on this just ain't it a lot of the production ideas i think lead to some empty feeling tracks that are strewn throughout the madness like i love a lot of the sonic components of small of small finds but i think that it for as erratic as it sounds it feels kind of like you're viewing it from a distance and while i said i like the lyrics of hunt you down i think that that creative decision to make that kind of song out of it i don't think works and i think a lot of the back end of the record as a whole i just don't think keeps me invested quite as, as well as the first half i think that for as brief as this record is it kind of coasts through without leaving an incredibly stern uh impact on me but i would say i like it at least a little bit more than the one before it i, I will say the last track on the record i think is great um i just kind of wish that like Outside of the the production sort of kneecapping some of the the more interesting ideas, that the back end had more tracks like that to at least lead into the closer how it does. I don't know the the pacing of this record feels kind of off. It feels conflicted in a way that's different than the center won't hold, but doesn't accent or help some of the lyrical ideas on here. I'm sitting more with this in like a middle of the road realm. I'm giving this a five. It's not the worst thing I've heard from this band. But again, given how much I like their classics, it still feels like a stone's throw away from a lot of the stuff of theirs that I've loved. Walking that bitch been a castle, it ain't no need in running my credit. We the Sopranos bitch, them niggas who like to buy guns. The last record I spun this month was Benny the Butcher's Def Jam debut, Everybody Can't Go. And the more that I sat with this record, the more that it kept reminding me of a different record from a couple of years ago that was also marked as like a debut of sorts from an artist who had been making buzz in the underground for a handful of years. And that's Freddie Gibbs' Soul Sold Separately. There's a sheen to this that is very pristine, that evokes that feeling. It's got that debut swagger permeating throughout that, even though Benny's been in the game for a while at this point, you know, there's a mission statement in the intro. They get sort of pecked back up with a track like Big Dog, where he talks about how far he's come and how it feels like he's kind of made it, while also cementing why he is one of the rappers one should be perking their ears up for now by announcing his greatest via a track like Braun, or talking about his hustle being as long as it has been with a track like everybody can't go we'll talking about the struggles one's faced along the way with a track like pillow talk and slander i love that he gives the grisilda guys a slot on here with grisilda express an incredible track that sees the three of them coming together and further cementing that while they are still prospering in their own lanes they haven't forgotten what brought them to the point that they're at now i love that this feels like a good beginner's introduction to Benny, in my opinion, because the production is so lush and well put together via Alchemist and Hit Boy, who provide a handful of grand, somewhat theatrical, while still boom bap inspired beats that I think Benny owns front to back. I think a lot of the features on here are also really fucking solid choices. Some I like obviously more than others outside of the Griselda feature. But I like that Wayne gets to come in on Big Dog, and I think that his feature is okay. I like Jadakiss on Pillow Talk and Slander. I think that he's a good choice for a track like that in particular. Same with Stove God Cooks on One Foot In. I think that that's another really, really fucking strong track. I think if I were to give one sort of relative criticism that would set this record back from some of the other records I've loved this month is that while I like this approach in album style, for Benny and again I feel like it's a good sort of 
first taste for a lot of people from his stuff. I've walked away from this wanting just a bit more, wanting some different types of production or wanting some like bolder ideas to be pushed out there. I know this is supposed to be like a label debut and as far as like the label concocted version of Benny, this is a really good first step. It's really fucking solid. I'm giving this a seven. It's really fucking strong. If you like New York rappers that talk about their come up or have talked about their time on the streets and you haven't heard Benny's brand of that, Give it a spin. He's a really good rapper. He he's His pen game is strong. His bar spinning is really fucking tight. And I think that his wordplay as a whole, I think, is choice as fuck. I don't want to say people are sleeping on Benny, but I know people that do listen to a lot of popular hip-hop that may not be on Benny's stuff that should definitely be on Benny's stuff. It's a really solid record. I know he's done better, but as far as a good first big step forward, you could do worse. And that's what I spun in January. Were there some things that you wish I'd spun? Let me know those in the comments down below. If you did like this video, give it a like. If you want to see more, consider subscribing. I drop two to four vids a week, and I will be dropping a fourth vid tomorrow that I hope you're also excited for. Either way, thank you again so very much for watching. I have been Viral Rack. You guys are good at situations, and I'll see you another day. Uh, uh, uh.